now actually do e-commerce on their website. Have a physical shopping cart and they can take money online. Yep, okay. So not, not many people. Okay, would you all like to be able to do that? Yeah, okay. So it's a great way to do it. It's, it can be quite complicated. Um, so I'm quite aware of the fact that a lot of people here are quite new to it all. Um, my background in e-commerce is I used to work for a company in Perth and I built a very big e-commerce system with 30,000 products in the database um, that came from different suppliers. So we had to amalgamate all the products into one database and then put it onto three or four different websites, which is quite a complicated process. So I was exposed to a lot of the ins and outs and the, some of the faults as well and some of the things to look out for when you have a, a, a basically an e-commerce website. But let's start small with you guys. So let's start with the real basics here, okay? So I've tried to, um, to give you an, under, uh, an understanding of what types of e-commerce websites really are there out there. Excuse me, these notes, they're not in our phone. No, they're so not, no. Quickly. If you can write some notes, but I can also um, send you the PowerPoint presentation as well. I've so got my card. Can we do that? Sorry? Um, I will, um, if you'd give me your email addresses or take my card. We can put them up on SharePoint. Put them on SharePoint, yeah. On SharePoint. If you guys are using SharePoint, yeah. yeah okay, okay great. Yeah, sorry, it's, there's no notes, it's just as we go along here. Um, so there's lots of different types of e-commerce websites, depending on your needs and how, how many products you have and what you can actually do with your uh, e-commerce. So I'll just stand over this side here and give you a bit of an idea. So the standalone website, which is possibly most of your websites are standalone. That means that you have a website and you're selling your own products. You're not selling anybody else's products, you're just selling your own products and your own services too, because you can obviously charge for your services, not just physical products. So the first one is a standalone. The second one is a standalone website and wholesale. Now I come across this a fair bit with some of my clients as well where they have, um, case in point, there's a, a website called Giddy Up Girl up in, um, up in Noosa there and Tammy sells a lot of clothing uh, with t-shirt designs for all the horsey people who love, uh, love horses and whatever. But she's also got a, um, a wholesale client list as well that sell her products all over Australia. So she has a website, a front end website that people can actually go and buy t-shirts and jodhpurs at retail prices, but she's also got a website that the public cannot see where wholesalers can go in and buy products. Now, we did a few tests on some of these standalone websites with a wholesale back end, and some of them fall down on their face because if I'm a wholesaler, I don't want to see a retail website. I just want to go in and see lists of t-shirts, pick four of those, three of those, and then is it on account, and I place the order, and there's obviously full, uh, systems behind that that actually um, fulfill the orders and post it out to the client. So this one is something, these are natural progressions of your business. When you start doing online commerce, you'll start on this model here, and if you have lots of products, you'll think, oh, I'd like other people to sell my products and services as well, so how do I do that? So it's all about choosing the right infrastructure and the right sort of shopping cart system for your website. So it's really nice if other people sell your products and you get paid for it. That's a lovely business model to have. So you're not just relying on retail, you're also selling wholesale or you're reselling your services to somebody else. So wholesale ordering via your website. It's all done through your website. And the next one, this is one of the, the best models to really make money from. It's standalone and a reseller. Um, so you've basically got a website where you're selling your own products, but also you're allowing other people to sell their products on your website as well. So if you're selling hats, for instance, wouldn't it be nice to sell matching handbags and shoes? But that's not your market. So you find someone who sells the shoes and the handbags, and you get their inventory list, generally on an Excel spreadsheet, then you can start and sell their, their products online. That means that you're not tying up all your cash on having extra stock and hats and all this kind of thing. Um, and that's basically called an affiliate. So they become an affiliate, or a, sort of like another person who, who supplies products to your website. So other people buy their products as well as yours, and then you obviously have to pay that person. So the affiliate model, I think you covered affiliates today, or you've, you know what affiliate marketing is all about? Well, you know, where you're selling other people's products and then you pay them a commission if you sell something. So that would have some sort of tracking thing. Uh, yes, that's the, right. The that came from your site. Yes. Generally in a database design, um, it'll have like a, um, a supplier ID number. So you'll know when that order comes through that supplier ID number five is XYZ Shoes. But also XYZ Shoes needs to have access to your system as well. So they can see, and it needs to be transparent. 
So everyone needs to know what's being sold and what commissions are available. If you don't have these other systems in place, then people may not do business with you because they'll say, well, how do I know what's sold? So they need access to your system too. And this is where some of the shopping carts at the moment let it, everyone down because they, they're out of the box solutions, but they don't think, they don't think like a retailer. I used to run 20 stores in my younger days all over Australia, merchandising stores, stock out of China, um, lots of staff, and knowing some of the problems that we do have running a traditional retail store, we've got to try and take that mentality and put it onto the website. And we'll discuss sort of merchandising your website and your online store later on today as well. So these three here are very important, but this, oh, so this is really the full, the full one. So if you want to have a really great e-commerce solution, a website, a standalone website where you're doing wholesale and you're also bringing other people's products on board as well. So if, when you start and bring these guys on board, other people, your product list could double, treble, ten times. But you haven't got the worry of physical warehousing, tying up all your money in stock, which we never really want to do, um, but you're still getting traffic coming to your website and you're just going for the multiple sale. If we're all in retail, we know we buy a single item, but we want people to buy the whole outfit. I used to sell suits, it was always the suit, the shirt, the tie, the shoes, the belt, the whole thing. And try and give them that option. Okay, so this is one of the one of the sort of different types of models. So think about what you may need in your business as far as will you get to this level or are you quite happy just doing that? If you're making money online doing that, great. Wholesale is also a really great way of doing it, I think. Okay, so there's an idea there. So shopping carts, where do we start? So first of all, I suppose I've given five basic sort of shopping cart levels that I've been exposed to in my travels. Um, and number one is really, it's a self-hosted shopping cart system. That means that you have, a, you have your own website and you're hosting it yourself and you can add a shopping cart to that. And I, I mentioned something here called obviously WordPress and Joomla, which you're aware of, they're content management systems that allow you to change all the content on your website yourself. So you're not relying on a developer and paying out additional fees. Again, we discussed this in the last um, um, uh, conference we had. If you can control your own website, you're 99% there for making money online. If you have to rely on someone else to update your website for you, it's a problem. And I'm still coming across this continually where people get stuck and they say, what do I do, John? What do I do? The first thing to do is control your website and make sure you know all your passwords. If, even if a developer's doing it for you, make sure you've got access to all your passwords so you can actually update your files and take backups of your files as well. Because if you lose your website, you lose your business. Okay? So, is anybody here you're running a WordPress theme or a Joomla theme? or? Yeah, okay. So obviously with WordPress, I use WordPress a lot. I really enjoy working with it. I've done it for two or three years now. So I've learned all the positives and the negatives and the ins and outs of using this system. They have, they have about four or five different shopping carts you can just plug in. And you add your products, you can, then you can pay through PayPal. It's very, very easy to set up. So for a first-time business owner, I'd suggest looking at uh, WordPress, integrating that with, your, um, with PayPal. Okay? Custom built. Quite a few people have a custom built shopping cart solution where someone's, they've said to a developer, I want a website and I want a shopping cart. And he said, great. So he's built a system for you. <clears throat> it may have been done a year ago or two years ago or just recently. But is it really going to do all the things that you thought it may do? So this is built, because we're not all experts, we're learning continually. I'm learning every day. So the custom built model has lots of flaws because you're relying on, on one developer to build your website. And if that person, he or she leaves, then you're stuck. Because generally, in my experience with working with developers, they never leave any notes because it's extra, extra work. You don't know where things are. There's no documentation as to this is how the process actually works. There's not, never anything like that. I'm working with someone at the moment who has got a massive system that's seven years old and we're trying to work out how it, how it works. And this is a quite a big client. So if you want to go the custom built model, it's really good, but make sure you know your developer well and you've got documentation, okay? So let's look at the add-on. If you have a normal website now, that's an HTML website, or it could be um, a PHP or a scripting website, you can bolt a, an e-commerce solution onto your website. So you can buy off the shelf software like Xcart or CSCart, which we'll go through in a second. And all that does is it just sits next to your website or underneath your website. The chances of doing that yourself are sort of like quite limited. 
it does take a little bit more knowledge to actually set it up, um, database connections and all this kind of thing. But it's often, a lot of people go, well, I'll just buy one off the shelf. $300, US dollars, some of the shopping carts are. They're quite inexpensive. But you do need to spend time setting them up, you know, taking the right photo, small photo, large photo, writing the descriptions and all this kind of stuff too. Um, another popular one is the hosted solution. And what that is is really when you, when you go to a, a hosting company who have a shopping cart system already built, and all you do is you pay $60 a month or 100 bucks a month. You get access to all of their systems. They do all your backups for you, the whole thing. That's often a really good way to start as well. Hosted solutions. Out of the box, again, um, if you have your own server or you have a hosting package that allows you to upload files to, you can get an out of the box solution um, that's got all the bells and whistles on it. And there's quite a few really good ones out there too that do everything for you. Again, it's a learning curve. We're all in business here. We can't spend six months learning how to build a shopping cart. We want to get it online, connected to the payment gateways and get money coming into our bank account straight away. So there's a couple of really, really big ones. I think the most expensive one I've seen um, is something called Interspy, and it's about $2,000. And that does everything. It's almost like an Amazon shopping cart. It's got everything you can think of. Probably too much because you just wouldn't get anything done. You'd just be keep on, well, what's this button for? What's that button for? So you'd get confused. So really, it's, we're looking at starting around this sort of area here. Um, hosted solution or adding, if you have a content management system, adding a shopping cart to that. Okay, and this is what I, this is what I sort of do. Um, now, so again, just I was just going to give you some ideas of your levels of um, experience here for each and every one of them. So shopping carts here, intermediate to advanced, um, custom built. You really need to know what's going on. An add-on is just intermediate to advanced. A hosted solution is quite simple, really basic. I want this website. You put in your, your name of your company, and it generates the whole thing for you. And then you but then there's no training. You can't go to a one-on-one -on -one person and talk to them. That's another thing to consider when someone's building a shopping cart. Can you actually knock on the door and say, John, this is not working, or I need to add this, or I'm, I'm stuck with that. So it's quite important to have someone, I think, that's local, especially if you, because your business will grow. So these things are sort of like push the boat out into the ocean, and uh, if you can come back to shore, fantastic. If you're out there in the middle of the ocean, then you might have some problems. Okay, so make sure that you pick the right one. And there's so many of them. There's dozens and dozens of them. I have corralled a few of them so we can give, get some ideas there as well. Out of the box, intermediate to advanced again. Um, takes a lot of time to set up, but they're very, very good. Um, okay. Again, shopping carts, um, what kind of questions would you ask yourself? You know, so if you have a, a, a existing website, do you have a website hosting plan that can add a shopping cart? Most of them can anyway. You just add a shopping cart. A lot of them will have it for free. Um, there's quite a few shopping carts that do come with hosting packages. Do you have the skills? And this one's probably the, the best one. Can you be really bothered spending all the time setting it up? Because it is, it's a it is a learning curve. I won't, be, I won't lie to you, it's a learning curve. So do you get someone else to do it for you? Then again, there's lots of different questions and checklists that you need to ask a developer. So you need to understand what it is you want the shopping cart to do and, and can the shopping cart be scalable? You know, can you add more products? Is there a limitation to the number of products? Can you only pay by PayPal? Can I put it into my bank account? There's all different fees as well. Again, I was looking at some of the self-hosted um, shopping carts, and they have limitations. So you might only have 50 products, level one, which is $60 a month. And the next limitation may be um, something like uh, 150 products a month. So the price goes up. But they also, um, they also, can trap you sometimes by saying you only get one gig's worth of data traffic. So if you get lots of people coming to your website, and you're doing a great job of your search engine marketing, and people are coming to your website, and they will come to the website, and they'll put stuff in the shopping cart, but what don't they do? They don't purchase. It's massively common. Something like 87% of people who put things in shopping carts go, that looks good, but I'm not going to commit myself. And I'll discuss that later on as well. And there's ways around that as well. There's ways of making your shopping cart checkout page user friendly so people go, oh, okay, that's fine. I can get my money back. It's shipping in two days. There's lots of different things. There's a massive check. I haven't got it on here, but I can email it to anyone. That's really interesting. So just look at people like Amazon. Look at, look at the best. They're the, one of the best online shoppers. Look at what they're doing. Look at their model and you'll see how involved that is. 
Um, again, we've mentioned this before, will you be allowing others to order from your website, wholesale prices? That's the, uh, the model we discussed before, and other people's products, which is affiliate marketing. So I suppose do a checklist. What is it you really want to do with your website? You know, are people buying products or are they buying services as well? Will they be able to download music? So will they be able to, can you do pay-per-view? So if you've got a great video on how to do X, Y, Z, then you say to someone, you know, 1995, click here, and you get access to the product straight away. And I think that's the thing to think about when you're doing online commerce is to, people want it now. Like when you buy something on eBay, you go, oh God, I wish I could get it tomorrow. And you wait four or five days. So if you can give people products they can have in their hand very quickly and offer things like, um, you know, express postage and this sort of thing as well, it's, it's really interesting to make people buy your product. And there's lots of different things that we can discuss as well. Um, okay, again, we're just going through some points here. Again, I can email all this to you. Um, one of the most important things is can you add and edit products yourself? Obviously you can, there's different levels of that. Limit to the number of products. Um, I think you discussed this this morning about different payment options. Obviously PayPal is sort of at the top of the tree now. Because even though if your client doesn't have, or your customer hasn't got a PayPal account, they can stay, still pay with credit card through PayPal. When you set up a merchant facility through your bank, that's when it becomes really painful. You've got your merchant fees obviously, it, same as if you've got a normal FPOS, but you do need an online merchant facility, which is different from your normal FPOS machine. So then you need someone to hook in the transaction to go into your bank account, and that's quite specialised. Um, a lot of people will charge a lot of money for that as well. I find that PayPal is a great way to go, or well, the best one really is. Isn't isn't this the best one? EFT. Why is it the best? No fees as well. So you've got no fees, so go straight into your bank account. So if you're selling products for thousand dollars, two thousand, three thousand dollars, and you're paying two and a half percent, it's a lot of money to give away. Yeah. Basic question. That's okay. EFT. Mm -hmm. You mean FPOS or is that something else? Electronic funds transfer, like direct deposit. Yeah, yeah that, that kind of stuff straight into your bank account. Yeah. Obviously, there is a time lag on that. You have to check your accounts, but you check them daily anyway if you're running you a business. The reference number on, on the receipt. Yes. So that's right. The reference number will be generated by your shopping cart. Yeah. So that's something else to consider as well. You know, can you make your own reference numbers, or does it start at number one? Like if I had a website, I wouldn't want it to start at number no. one. Yeah, it started at 4,097 or something. People go, oh, we sold a lot. And that's what I used to do. I used to start order numbers at you know, 4,000 or 357. Because if number one, you think, oh, this is dodgy. So there's different ways of doing it. Google Checkout as well, obviously, it's, it integrates very well. BPay is great as well. It does take some setting up. has special codes you have to set up with BPay. I've set it up before. It's a bit of a pain. But um, some of the larger companies like BPay as well, if you're paying bills online, obviously. Um, this is probably one of the really interesting ones which is how do you calculate your shipping costs and your postage costs depending on your products. If you're selling products by weight, by volume. Um, I wonder do it by how much you spend. Like if you spend up to that's right. A certain price for shipping and then it that's it. There's lots of different ways you can actually entice customers to make a purchase by saying, you, know, you can build a freight into, into the price anyway. That's right, or you can say for an extra dollar you can get express post and get it delivered in two days or one day anywhere in Australia. And that's, oh, okay, great, I'll pay an extra dollar. Um, but it's already in your margin anyway. I used to always try and build my postage into the margin. I still charge them for postage, but charge them $7 for express post. And they go, isn't it $11? I say, no. But there was in, in the system that they were paying for an event you know, somewhere. Everyone knows it's 11 bucks to send something three kilos anywhere in Australia. And also put those um, little logos on your website as well. If you're using that methodology and that way of posting to your, cl your clients, just brand it with other people's products. Australia Post, you can do all that. Um, this is obviously very important, your order tracking and invoicing. When you buy a shopping cart system, it'll have a, uh, a system where you can see all the orders, you can view the orders. There's lots of different levels to this as well. It's, qu it's quite sophisticated because really, once someone buys something from your store, you want to be able to talk to that customer, either by email. So I, I would set up three or four different emails. So if they made an order, it would say, thanks very much, Mr. Johnson, for your order, da 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 And the next one would be, we've just um, packaged your order. It, it's been delivered t today or tomorrow. And then two, three days later, we'd say, this is just a courtesy follow-up email. Did you receive the package? Is there any problems with it? We're here to help. And then another one after about a week later will be the same sort of thing. 
So, but some systems don't do that. It's not like take your money. Isn't it nice when you buy something on eBay and you have a really good feedback from someone and they say, oh, that was great, you paid on time, really fantastic. And it's nice to get that kind of feedback, not take the money and say, oh, great, because if they bought from you once, they'll buy from you again. Really. So try and keep your customers in the loop. And these kind of email systems will really do it for you. Again, it takes research and time. Um, any ongoing costs, again, with your website hosting? Uh, are they charging you more for extra traffic? Um, if you have more people are buying from you, um, that's mainly with the self-hosted ones, where out of the box you just buy them yourselves. This is really important. Technical support. If something goes wrong, because we're working with programs and computers here, and things do go wrong, who can you call? Again, if you're hosting something in America because it's cheap, you've got a you know, day's wait and it's obviously costs involved there as well. So is it better to go local and make a local phone call, use a local developer? It may cost a little bit extra money, but end of the day, I think it's a, a wise move to do that as well. And there's lots of developers on the coast here. Um, so one-on-one -on -one training, isn't it nice to get one-on-one -on -one training when you can sit down with someone and you can say, John, you're talking too fast. I probably am. Can you explain it to me? in really simple terms. I think that's the thing there. Um, and again, do you get any extra training with CDs and PDF documents? And is it, is it, is it online? Can you, or do you have to purchase extra things as well? And is support free or is it chargeable? Sometimes I'll charge you for support because the, the software is like 100 bucks, but if you make a phone call, you get charged 4.95 a minute or something. So there's all these traps you have to really be careful about. And, uh, and I still have problems with it. I don't know the definitive solution yet. I'm still trying to work through it and, uh, and recommend it to people as well. Um, again, sorry, we're just running through some points here. Advanced features. Um, when I was selling all the products with 30,000 products in a database, <clears throat> we had a base buy price or cost price. So how do we set the actual retail price? There's different ways you can do that. You can say, it costs me 10 bucks, I'm gonna sell it for 20. Or you can put a percentage markup on the product as well. So I've got a 50% markup or 100% markup or 200% markup. Each has its own merits as well, especially if you have lots of different clients and you're selling um, products uh, to different uh, people who are buying your product. You might give a percentage markup to one client who buys more per month and less to another one who buys only a small amount. So you might give them a markup of 45% if they're really, really buying lots of products or they order your services regularly as well. Um, set in-store price points and online price incentives to buy. That's, I'll go through that on your shopping cart. So it's nice to say the price was this. It was $15.95, now it's $9.95 because you think you're getting a bargain straight away. Just walk through Coles and you see it was $5, now it's $2. Or, and I notice what they're doing now in, in offline marketing is they're trying to get people to buy more. You know, three for 20 bucks, four for this, and people go, okay, great, I'll buy them. But it's a psychological hook that we're all going, oh, I'll get four for 10 bucks, great. I only want one, but I've got four. But the price was low, and it, it's amazing. They're using this psychology now. Start and do it online. So if you're selling small products, and you buy one for five bucks, you know, buy four for 15. Try and think about that kind of merchandising and use offline like Coles because they're masters at it. They're really interesting. And I get a chuckle every time I go in there because it's a war inside these shops and it's quite amazing. Psychological war. Um, when you have, obviously, imagery is really great to sell your product. People like to see the product. So not just one image, maybe three or four different images. Again, who's going to take the photograph of the image? One of the biggest problems that I come across and I see a lot because I'm always scouring for images online is that it may have a little thumbnail that big on the website. When you click to download it, it's this big. It's huge. So that slows down the way your page will load as well. So some, some shopping carts come with a little software program that makes your, web, your website images small. So there's things to consider as well. If you've got 100 photographs that are you know, A3 because you took it on 7 megapixels with your camera and you think, I'll just upload it, and it's 7 megs, then that's a lot. And your web, you think, why is my website really slow? But you don't know these kind of things because you're not graphic designers and you don't know the programs. There are programs online, websites you can go to, upload your photo, and it'll, you can say, what size do you want it? And it'll do it for you. Have you come across those before? They're great. I forget the name, but something like um, Online Image Optimizer. Just Google something like Online Image or Shrink My Image or something. And upload your photo to it, and it'll give it to the right size. Okay, so there's something, just, just little tips that I come across as well. It's like making your um, images smaller is really important. 
Um, okay, different price points for different um, levels of customer. Don't give everyone the same price point. If someone buys two grand a month, you know, give them a bit of a discount. Refer a friend is always very good as well. So if someone buys something, you can say recommend them to a friend. And there's often, obviously, things like reward cards. You know, like Myers have the reward cards, everyday rewards. Wouldn't it be nice if you got rewarded with a $10 voucher from someone if you referred a friend? Even though if that friend didn't buy anything, it's still nice to get a $10 voucher. So if I'm a retailer giving someone a $10 voucher, I'm giving away, what, five bucks maybe? Maybe giving away $2, I've got a good markup. So it's, but if you get it, oh great, $10, and I can buy something for 10 bucks on that website, that's a good thing. So try and think about giving stuff away like that. Out of the blue as well, so look, you bought this product, here's a $10 gift voucher to use anywhere on my store. And they go, oh, great, something for nothing. Because no one ever gets anything for nothing hardly. So try and think about that as well, giving people things for nothing. Um, this, some, this is something that's really quite important that I've used a lot. Australia Post have an evolving database of all the postcodes and the suburbs and the states. It's just a flat file, so one spreadsheet. You can download that spreadsheet and you can integrate that into your website. You need a developer to do it. But what it does is, if I want to get a price on postage to 3174 somewhere in Melbourne, I can just type in the postcode and then because I've got all the information from Australia Post, it brings up the state, it brings up a selection of suburbs as well because there's more than one suburb to each postcode, like Budrum for, for instance and uh, where we are. And it, it also keeps your data um, accurate as well. So if someone's making an order and you've got, already got their postcode, that means you've already got their state and you've already got their suburb. So they haven't got to enter something in as well. So we're getting quicker and quicker at getting the sale and less time filling out long forms. Just get enough information that you need. And the Australia Post database is free. You get it from the Australia Post website. Again, I think you discussed this morning, if you have an international business, offer different currency types. Quite simple, isn't it? How do you, how do, you do that? Some of the websites like WordPress will come with currency converters and you can just basically click a button and says, put this in French, it'll actually transform your home website into French or German or whatever. So think about currency options as well. And um, my favourite, search engine optimization on all the shopping cart items as well. Next time you go to a website and you, and you click on a product, have a look at the browser at the top here. And it's called a query string. And inside that it could be something like product ID 6725, category 97, whatever. That means nothing to a search engine. If that page keeps on getting served, the search engines will take that information and if it says, um, my store, um, luxury handbags, Gucci, um, whatever, then it takes those keywords rather than have a number. So always try and think about adding, does your shopping cart allow for keywords and SEO on the pages, okay? Uh, I think we've done a lot of them, yeah. Okay, we did that. Okay. We'll just go through again some of the self-hosted -host, uh, options here, just so you get an idea of what's involved, just sort of a bit of a graphic for you there. So con um, a self-hosted, which is the WordPress or Joomla, the content management systems. It's a shopping cart, and you can also use templates as well. So here's something, do you guys use templates at all? Do you know of templates? Okay, so templates are really, instead of thinking, oh, how do I design a website? Go to a template website, like Template Monster, for instance, there's one of them, Template Monster. Just Google website templates. And um, you know, we're giving away our secrets here, I suppose, but you still have to integrate them. So this little template here is a ready-made template that all you have to do is, when you upload your products and tie it in with a shopping cart software, your website will look like that. It looked really professional because these templates are designed, there's something like 75 US dollars to buy. There's still a fair bit of work to do all these, connect these little plus signs together, but there's just some ideas there. If you want to have a go and DIY and do it yourself and learn, because I do encourage you to learn it as well. Take, in charge, take charge of your own business online. There's so much help and, uh, and, uh, on YouTube and downloadable files on these two products. They're almost identical, the same. I like WordPress because it's nice and easy, and I've used it for years. Joomla is still very good as well. So Joomla is a great um, content management system, and you can buy lots of different shopping carts. This one here goes with the WordPress, Virtuomart, and these, this one's payable, it's about 100 bucks. This one's free. So that's free, and that's free, and that's 75 bucks. Mm. I went to Template Monster and, yeah. you know, amazed mm, uh, at all how beautiful it was and it's a copy that easy and they had a couple of free ones so, mm -hmm. you know, I downloaded those. Well. 
but it came with all these numbers and writing mm. and thinking, well, I have no idea no. what to do from here. You need something so like, yeah. just, you know, turn back. A lot of people do, they look at it and go, oh, great, I love that. But again, it comes down to your expertise and can you be bothered? But what I like to do with templates is it gives me inspiration for a theme. Right. Because if someone's selling handbags, I'll choose that one. It's already done. And I haven't got to spend a day trying to think, oh, what, what do I use? These guys get paid to do professional templates. So try and start off with a template. When we have a client who wants a website, I always look at a template first. I always look at someone else's. I look at the competitor websites and see what space we can fit that niche in there. So you can't just buy a template monster and put it in your own... Um, um content management system so that you can just well, start writing it you can. Yourself. No, you, you can, but it depends what, what you're doing. If you're using one of these content management systems like WordPress or Joomla, the beauty about these are is that you don't need a website developer. You can buy or get a free template and then just put it into your, th it's called a theme. So it's your theme, your website. So you, these come with a default template, really basic. But you can buy a theme or download. There's thousands of free themes. And you just upload the theme to your, um, much like you do with FTP, which we discussed. Upload a theme, select a theme, and voila, the whole website changes. So you get the theme to do with WordPress or Joomla? Yes. They, these are, this is like the bare sort of nuts and bolts of the coding. Okay, so this is all the stuff you want to get involved with. But the themes, when you buy a theme or a template, it, they're called themes with these content management systems. Templates are more for scripting websites, HTML, that kind of thing. But this is such a great system to use. There's so much you can add to WordPress as well and Joomla in little plugins, little bits of software that make the website sing and dance. They're just fantastic. But it takes a lot of time to learn them as well. Um, but you, if you like your website, if just say your website's this shape here and you think, well, that's not really working. I can have a different theme and I can move this over to here. This can go to there. This can come down here. I can have those images up there. You can change your website around. And that's one of the fundamental points of having a successful website is being able to change your website. It's like a store. If you have a shop window, would you leave it the same for two years? I don't think so. You're constantly merchandising your store putting signs in the front, changing your mannequins, you know, putting different products in, on display there. So think of your website like a store. So go to wordpress.org. Um, you can get a free blog. This is like, this is blogging software. So it's basically, it's a blog, which is a web blog where you can just add your, it's like a diary of your business and whatever, you know what blogs are. But it's got so, um, it's very advanced now. It's just an awesome system to build on for developers. So WordPress is great, and Joomla is great. The thing I don't like about Joomla, personally, is I don't like the way it does the HTML editing. So if I want to change from a visual mode like this, like a, the WYSIWYG, you know, what you see is what you get, to change all the code that you would have thought, and you think, oh. Now, when I use Joomla, it just puts everything together in one big file. It doesn't separate lines. So it's really hard for me to, and time is money for everyone. So I wouldn't recommend it for that reason only. Uh, but if you're happy doing visual stuff, then it's great. Again. Free, free. It connects to a database. You've got to know how to do that. So it's not like free and you can set it up tomorrow. It does take time. But there's lots of help files online. There's something called a one minute express setup with um, WordPress. Just Google that and it'll tell you how to do it. There's thousands of videos on YouTube. Brilliant. So if you want to have a play with that, because it's not just a website, it's also a blog. And the blog will bring traffic to your website, not your website. When you start writing things about what you're doing in your business, that's when the blog will start to get search engine traffic. It takes time, and there's lots of different things you can do. Um, I've got a little website about uh, road cycling, because I quite like cycling, and it's taken me about nine months to get it to, to about 100 visits a day. So that's quite consistent now. So now I have to sell something on that. I have to, I have to sell something. So how do I know what I have to sell on my website? Because I read all my analytics reports. And one of the biggest problems that people have with buying a bike is they don't know what size to get. Because so I can pick it up in my reports. So what, am I, what, am I, what will I do next? I'll write an ebook on how to choose the right bike for your size and stature and, and whatever. And that's what I'll do. Sorry? $29. If I'm going to sell, if, if I'm going to spend seven and a half thousand dollars on a bike, it's nice to know. And it's not just about the bike and how to, it's also about how to fit yourself to the bike for safety and health as well, because there's lots of injuries with any sport. Mm -hmm. If you're not 
don't know what you're doing. Well, that's what I'm working with. Yeah, I'm working with a physiotherapy centre here in Budrum as well. So they give me some tips as well, and I'm sending business to them. So it all works with each other. So that's the self-hosted sort of. Um, Pretty much it, yeah, yeah. I will be doing eventually some of my own on blogs, and especially just on this, from off the starting blocks right through to making a blog work for you. And that's something that will be really good actually. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, hosted solutions. These are the ones where you pay X dollars a month. So this is already set up for you. They're pretty much generic, they're okay. Go there, pay your money, you can stop at any time. Just some ideas there as well. So they'll give you a, a, a templated online shopping cart. You don't have much freedom to do what you need to do with it. It'll just be a list of products and this is it here and the checkout and that's it. But it's, it's something to look at as well if you really want to have a two or three month play and get a website and then think, okay, I get, I get what it's all about, I get the concept now. But watch out for excessive charges on bandwidth, on the email. I saw one of these ones here that charges you if you send too many emails to your customers. What? So you've got to think about that. So if you're really getting lots of clients coming in and purchasing or looking and they're sending emails out, you'll start to get charged over excessive emails and hard disk space. Generally a website of this size may take up, you know, 50 megs, 50 megabytes. You get like a gigabyte, so it's nothing, 5%. Is it a favourite amongst those, John? Um, no, not really. I think um, Gate 13, I like the Australian ones. Gate 13 is quite good. These solutions, I always try trying to keep the Australian ones. This is an American one. I wouldn't like to recommend any of them because I've never really spent any money on them. I'm more of a, like a WordPress kind of guy and I like to control my own destiny. But really, again, it's like anything with your business. You have to research it and you have to get involved. We, we talked about the SEO stuff. That's a lot of work to do, but if you, if you look at just go to the websites and read about all the benefits, features and benefits, especially the support. And, um, and then look at examples, because they'll, they'll give you templates as well. So just have a bit of a scout around. Again, um, hosted, hosted uh, e-commerce shops, just Google it. I think using Google is, your, is Google should really be your best friend, or any search engine is your best friend, because it's just great. I use it all the time, and I'm constantly amazed at what it gives me. And there's lots of other things as well that you can do with Google, that you can educate yourself. I've got to show you something now. You go home tonight, and if you want to learn about a subject, by Friday, you could potentially be an expert. And this is the beauty about it. You could pick any subject, and I'll be doing this eventually in courses where we pick a subject, random subject, and then next time we come back, I'd expect you all to be the bee's knees about the subject because you can do it. You don't need to be an expert on crocheting or how to build your own home aquarium. You don't need to. You just use Google. It's all there. Everything's there. You just got to know where it is. Look under the lid and find it. And this is what we did with the SEO stuff. And for me, it's a wonderful opportunity because I'm always registering websites. But I've got to get over the next hurdle. I've actually got to really do it now. And I saw a book in Boss Magazine, actually, in, in the Financial Review. Not that I'm going to read it a lot, but it's called Make It Happen. It's a book called Make It Happen. And that's a message for me on a subliminal level or a metaphysical level, because I've run my life like that. I thought, okay, make it happen. And it's all about entrepreneurs who have lots of ideas, and we've all got them, but we never actually do anything with it. And we've got to go, right, so I'm going to buy that book today. So I suggest we all buy it, because it's, it's, a, it's a metaphor for me to take to make, you know, make some money and do it now. So I've got all, I can teach you guys all how to do it, because I'm not there yet. I'm still, you know, I'm, I'm earning a living. I'm not Anthony Robbins or any of those kind of guys. And I'd like to, to be able to do it so we can all learn together. You know? You're saying you're registering their names and things like that. Um, with the, that gate 13, how about putting in names? Um, also with my particular business, I find that the name that sort of tells what the business does has already been sold out, anything AU or .com. Yeah. Um, so what about using different things at the end, so still keeping the... You wouldn't be able to use a name. Um, that describes the business. The your, your name would probably be like, mine's like giantroadbike.shopbuilder.com.au. Right. You wouldn't really get your own name, so it's, like a, it's sort of like a subdomain or a domain alias. Yes. But if you have your own domain name, and you're right, that's one of the fundamental keys to getting good search engine traffic, is to have the, your really great domain name 
A really great. Well, well, it, well, the business is cosmetic tattoo, mm -hmm. and so AU is obviously gone. But I've got um, EU, which you know is obviously European. But it doesn't Google then find that? So it's still it was, nice and yeah. short. It's, mm. it's the, just cosmetic tattoo dot EU. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering whether I should promote that, or because someone said no, that because it doesn't have the AU at the end. That's <coughs> the best one to get is a dot com, it. which is a top level yes. domain. So if you can, but they're, of, they're often sold. But why not try cosmetic hyphen tattoo? Yes. Because that's just as good as a one well, long word. All of that. So how about putting one, two, three, or something like that at the end, or I don't know, like best, co best. Thing. Just again, Google, Google cosmetic tattoo, and then see what comes up. And then Google things like best cosmetic yeah, tattoo yeah, or yeah, Queensland yeah, cosmetic yes, tattoo. Because yes, 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 yes. is your business obviously it's local? Such a long name, you know. It, as long as it's not really huge, yeah. that's okay. Cosmetic tattoo. That's that's okay. That's not too bad. Try it with a hyphen. No, really, yeah. I have already. I've done quite a few with hyphens. Okay. I registered Budrum Real Estate not long ago. Okay. Because I want to try and knock people in real estate in Budrum off their So what other no, um, tricks are there besides hyphens? Or are you keeping it for yourself? No, well, basically, that's it. Just look, look at the competition. It's all, again, it's keyword research. Sort of a bit yeah. off topic on this one. Um, it's more your search engine optimization. Which you know, we, our main question was that EU business at the end. Well, EU, again, you're sort of like showing up if someone looks at EU, they go, but I'm in Australia. Yeah. You know, they, they go, well, I'm not gonna, that's not for me. So, you know, so try, try and, yeah, they dismiss it straight, because that's the first thing they look at. Again, if, they go to, if they're trying to find cosmetic tattoos and they go to a website called, you know, um, ABC, whatever it's called, then you don't have the keywords in there. So if someone searches, that's great, someone's searching for cosmetic tattoos, and that's in your domain name, then you've got a much better chance of being on page one. Anyone here can get the website on page one. Yeah. Depends what search term, but we can all do it. Mm. And I can show you how to do that. Just by doing keyword research and, and, show, and finding what people are looking for. Because Google tells you anyway. It's all there. It's wonderful stuff. I've just spent hours and hours and hours. <laughs> well, you do, but it's a business, isn't it? You know, or you can pay someone like me to do it for you. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I always suggest do it yourself. And again, it'd be nice to, to do a course like this. We, we will eventually do something like that. Because I think there's definitely a market for it. Um, out of the box solutions, we'll go through some of these. These are some of the more um, sort of advanced and intermediate levels as well. They're very good. I've used CS card before. It's quite good, 300 bucks, roughly 300 and something dollars. Again, I used this with um, a website called Giddy Up Girl up in, in Kuroi there. Look fantastic, really great stuff, but then where it let us down was it had no wholesale ordering. So the wholesalers had to go to the retail website and, no, don't want to do it. Wholesalers want to just see lists of products, a little photo and order. So these are great. This has, a lot, this has a lot of functionality, actually. So if you want to have a website that does it all for you, again, you need to have a, um, access to upload this whole software to your website via FTP onto your server. Press a button and it, and it installs itself for you. But you've got to have that kind of access to be able to do this yourself. This is another massive one, this one, OS Commerce. Again, it's, this is free. Again, it's, a, it's an open source, which means it's the code's freely available to anyone to play with, built by geeky developers, but it's fantastic. And, and Zencart is sort of like a baby version of this. So Zencart's free as well. The reason they make it free is, is because on the bottom of the websites down here, they've got links back to the website. So they're branding themselves as well, and they do sell different solutions as well. So again, I've, I've tried not to confuse you too much, but there's such a massive variety of shopping carts available. This is the best one I've seen, on par with an Amazon kind of car, um, website. Starts at 900 US dollars up to 2,000 US dollars. Probably need someone to set it up for you as well, but it does everything that you actually need. Ideas and inspiration, don't we all need those? So tweaking and testing. When I was doing a little bit more research on this, because I, I'm not doing a lot of shopping at the moment, I'm only doing development, but one of the biggest drawbacks of your shopping cart system is when someone gets to the checkout, like we said before, they don't proceed. So they go, yeah, but something just doesn't make them commit to buy that product, okay? And it's all about yourself testing what's going wrong. Having a website and not being able to test it is a big downfall. That's again why you need to be in control of your website. If you rung up your developer and said, I want to change the headline to this, I want to change the background color to blue and the verse color to white, you constantly have to tweak and test your website. Because how are you going to know what works? 
If you, if you leave it for three months, what's the point of that? Again, try and get in control of your website. Um, I always like to say, you know, obviously, what is it you really want to achieve with your website? Research, research, research your competition websites. Find out what they're doing. And then try and find out what they're not doing. Where do you fit? If there's six websites that are selling, you know, if you're an online florist, find out what they're not doing. But also find out what elements they're using on their page. Do they have a buy it now button, free postage, guaranteed delivery, personal service, gift vouchers available? You know, can you enter a promotional code? You know how we advertise so we can use a promo code offline to advertise, say, in the Weekender magazine. And then it'll say, enter this code into the box. And that code gives them 10% discount. And the beauty of that is, is that you can monitor that. So if you spend 500 bucks on an advert on a print magazine, and then you get 10 people coming to the website who spend 100 bucks each, then you've made a profit. And the way to do that is to promote people to go to the website because they'll get something off. They'll get a discount or they might get an extra purchase or buy one, get one free or something like that. So we can use all that, which I'll discuss as well later on. Write down what it is you like about the website. Make a list. Oh, I like that. I like the colors. I like what they're doing. Then research websites in America or the UK. Get a feel. Because the beauty about it being in Australia is there's no monitorium on design. And if you can look at American websites and look at UK websites, what's the chances of someone finding that website in Australia? Because we, we obviously live in Australia. So if we type in florist, Google's smart and it'll give us the names of florists in our area because they can tell by IP address. So if I type in florist, I wouldn't get a florist from Botswana. It's always going to be Australia first unless those search terms, there's nothing for um, Australia, it'll show up the UK. So I get inspiration from Belgium, from Germany, from Japan, um, America. And you can take those concepts and then you can use them on your website. Because don't be afraid someone's going to sue you for copyright. Don't copy it. Get some ideas. Get some ideas on what other people are doing. And then, you know, put stuff in the shopping cart. Place an order and then see what happens at the end of it. See if you get an email that says, whoops, thanks for putting something in the cart, but we noticed you never completed the order. Is there something we did wrong? So you get an email from somebody, goes, oh, okay. So think about those kind of things as well. I like to get ideas from somewhere else. It's no point making it up. Try and get ideas from other people as well. Look for common elements like buttons and calls to action. Um, I saw a, um, I did a search last night for buy it now buttons on the shopping cart and someone had 107 buttons on it that have been sourced from different websites. And it's amazing to see different shapes and sizes, but what's actually written on the button is really important as well. One of the most important features of a checkout button is not submit, it's proceed to secure checkout. That is one of the most effective text pieces you can put on your website. Proceed to secure checkout. Not buy, or not buy it now. So read blogs and discover what it's all about as well. Because um, again, it's all there. Um, it's got to be pain free, nice and simple to buy online. Not, not a massive big form. A really, really good trick if someone is on your website and not so much even buying products is if you say subscribe or leave your name, just get the email address first. So get their email address and then once, the email, once you've got their email address, take it to another page where they have to put their name and address. If they don't do that, you've got their email address anyway and then you can send them an email. All right, so lots of big forms. I don't like lots of nice big forms. Just make it really simple. Checkout's got to be obviously fast and simple. Um, just Google best practices for e-commerce. Just, again, best e-commerce best e e shopping carts, best e-commerce um, systems, that kind of thing. Again, fine-tune and tweak your website and your checkout page. That's really important. I'll show you some examples of some good checkout pages in a minute because we're probably running over time. Um, and this is the goal, really. This is the goal of a shopping cart is to reduce the shopping cart abandonment. Again, if you just Google shopping cart abandonment, you'll have so much information, you won't sleep for a week. It's incredible. Interacting with your customers. I've just grabbed a couple of websites here. Again, things you can do on your website. I just picked one here. There's a cycling one here. It's like a retail store. Think about special offers. Think about new arrivals, new products, promoting new products. If you're a ma manager specials, we all know what they are. Markdowns and bargain basement, you know, all the stock you can't sell, one-off, odd sizes, wrong colors. 
put them in a bargain basement somewhere down here, bargain basement. Price point, you know, featured products and limited time offers. Just a way of people looking at a website like this and going, okay, they can see the price. They haven't done such a great job of it here, but they've got bang, but they've got a sale, obviously that draws attention there as well. Um, they've got different price points here, the RRP, and now they've got the real price down here. So there's lots of things you can do, but as long as your software can handle it. Again, think about these kind of things. There's no point in having a website that says, you know, uh, buy these shoes for 69 bucks. You want to be able to tell people about the shoe as well and why they should be buying it. So that, I would have, have also the benefits under there as well. Waterproof, you know, da 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 da. So think about, think about your website like a shop front. Again, these guys do a really great job of it. So, whoa, 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 what's happening here? So they've got price points, they've got bullet, you know, calls to action, flashes, the whole thing there. I always look at these guys and find out what they're doing. Same with the thing, they're probably the same company actually, very similar, they're a very similar company. So if you have a website that's selling, even if you're selling flowers, so have a nice little graphic like that with a, with a price on it and perfect for Mother's Day or, or whatever it is. So try and get ideas from other people's websites as well and find out what they're doing, you know, find your store, you know, sign up for the JB newsletter here as well. But a buyer's guide, that's a, great, that's a great thing to have on your website, how do I buy, clicky for a buyer's guide here, you know, all these other things. It's easy delivery there, there's lots of things you can think of and just write a list of everything down and, and try and, and go back and look at your website and go, do I have these things on my website? think if you have them or not, there's probably 10 or 15 things you can actually do. <clears throat> I googled again, another, I just googled best shopping cart pages two days ago. So I thought, well, let's see what's happening. And people are always out there on the internet scouring around for best shopping carts and buttons. So here's some ideas, I've just got four or five here. So a wish list is something that's really important as well. So if you buy a product or you're looking to buy a product but you think, oh, I really wish that one had a different chime. You can put that on your wish list. It also tells the customer, but you can actually come back and get that wish list as well. It'll save it to a little cookie on your computer. This is really important. It tells me that, oh, okay, it's in stock. Great. Because how many times have you ordered something and you get an email saying, sorry, we're out of stock on that. It's coming in three weeks. And you go, oh my God, I paid my money. So that's really quite a nice thing to do. Gift wrapping available. That's cool. Make money off that. You charge them 10 bucks for gift wrapping. Think yeah, what's that? Gift wrap a doorbell. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, you go. Gift messages. People put cards on them as well and, and all sorts of things. Again, lots of links to, if you want to add something to your shopping cart, you may want to buy something else. So you want to go back to the previous page, um, get a gift card or use a gift card. They've got something here. A great, they've, they've basically haven't charged you for postage, which I think is quite cool. So you look like you're getting a bargain straight away. So little things like that. Proceed to secure checkout. That's one of the ones that's using that really good button there. So this is just some ideas that I came across, and so it's quite a few, three or four. Again, another idea was price. Now this is the price. This could be on. This could be in-store price. This could be online price. You know, this kind of thing. Or it could be a limited time book between the first of October and the thirty-first or whatever, and save X dollars here. Promotional coupons. We talked about that before, where you give your clients a, a number and they can type it in, get a discount. Um, this is like a, a loyalty card, so you can credit points to your loyalty card as well, all sorts of things there, and obviously shipping and handling as well. And they've got something here where you can actually donate money to a pet foundation. Again, just common elements as well. You, you buy this product. Amazon's great at this as well. They say, you know, people who bought that also bought that and that and that. So we're going for the multiple sale. It's, it's pretty commonplace now, but are, are we are you using it on your website? So you, yeah, well, that's right, exactly. So again, how much information do you put on there? It's, it's a real skill, so there's lots of white space on certain ones as well. Amazon, if you saw Amazon when it first started, it was a terrible website. But they've obviously got millions of dollars and they can, they can tweak and, tr and change. And they have focus groups as well, so that button's too small, that should be yellow, that should be blue, that should be bigger. And they pay hundreds of thousands of dollars a year just to have people say, I like that or I don't like that. So again, it's testing. It's just testing your website. Get feedback from your customers. Um, another one they do as well is put all the shopping card, all the um, payment methods in the bottom there. Oh yeah, I can pay by PayPal. I love seeing that one. PayPal. So if you can pay by PayPal, fantastic. And also there's different methods there as well. Or bill me later. So buy it now and bill me later. 
I wouldn't do that. But so you, you buy it now, it's almost like a lay-by, but you get the goods delivered. I think you've got to be pretty pretty cool to do that. I wouldn't do that. So I'm not too sure exactly what it is. Enjoy 90 days to pay. So it's always on credit. So you, after, you, after you did that and you clicked that, you probably go to a credit form, which will take you half an hour to fill out, <laughs> uh, which will annoy me. Okay, here's another one here as well. Again, they've got a really nice description to make sure I'm actually buying that right laptop. I didn't click the wrong button because imagine doing that. And you've got to send it back in postage. That's a nice saving, 70 bucks. I would have made that bigger actually, which they have. So they re-emphasize the fact they're saving $70 today. It's today only. Okay, it's not like, oh, you save 70 bucks on this. So there's different calls to action as well that make them want to buy it. Check out now before these, these deals expire. Again, oh, I've got to buy it. So there's all little things they're using on these websites here as well to do it. Um, again, different types of payment options. And this is a nice one actually. Click here because you may qualify for free shipping. Oh, I'll click that. I don't know what it would do because I never checked it out. But it could, you might say buy another laptop and get free shipping or buy a bag or whatever it is. So if you spend you know, $469, you might get something else. You might get a mouse thrown in and get free shipping. So there's all sorts of what tricks that they do use to make this all happen. So I just thought I'd give you a bit of an idea that it's not just a shopping cart. There's a fair bit of science that goes into it. And there's a lot of people um, who are still tweaking and testing this kind, of, uh, this kind of stuff here. And I think that's the last slide, I think. So there you go. Hopefully I haven't confused you again. But I hope you enjoyed it anyway. There's lots of things you can do with a shopping cart. It all comes down to your requirements. And, um, but go online and check out other people's shopping carts and get ideas and find someone local who can give you some advice on how to, on how to actually do it. Okay? So I hope you've enjoyed that. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. And anyone can have the PowerPoint presentation as well. We'll put it online and you can download it as well. And um, my cards are there. If anyone wants to email me, I'll send you a, a, a really big list of about 30 points of what to put on your checkout page as well. Just stuff to jog your memory. So look at your website and go, oh, I don't have that. And these things can actually make a difference between people going ahead with the sale and just leaving the shopping cart. Because what stops them buying, you know, pressing that button? Something's not right. Either they don't understand what you, your sales message is not correct or there's something that's just not laid on the table for them. So what stops them? A guarantee is a really big one as well. Have a 100% money back guarantee. We all can't do that with our businesses though. So 100% money back guarantee if you follow the terms and conditions. Because anyone can say, if you follow my principles, you'll make you know, $100,000 online. But if you deviate from that path, deals off. You know, guarantees off. But 100% guarantees or money back guarantee is a really great way to do it. But we, we, all, we all can't do that. Testimonials on your shopping cart, which I didn't. If you have a testimonial on your shopping cart checkout page, you know, John Miles also bought this product and here's what John said, da 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 da, and here's what Bill said. Oh, okay, okay. But how many times have you seen a testimonial on a shopping cart page? Not often. And these are things that I just come across when, and from my own experience again, going online and shopping online and finding out what are the, what are the real experts doing. Eventually I'd like to do a course on copywriting because again, it's, writing is what it's all about. So writing the headlines. When we did a seminar up in, in Gympie with Jeff, we did the SEO one, which is really quite interesting actually. I did a full day there and we had some wonderful things that came up about search engine optimization and using keywords and then we, tried, we talked about the USP, you know, what's unique about your business and then all the features and benefits and are those features and benefits featured on your website? Do you have a really great headline on your website? Do you test that headline? You know, can you change it? You know, so how do you, how do you learn copywriting? You know, I'm going to do all this to show you how to do it. There's programs you can buy. I'm going to tell you that. I will. There's programs you can buy for $4. All right, which will teach you how to write a really brilliant headline. It'll teach you how to write fantastic sales copy just by filling in the blanks. It's a lot of new, it's got, got lots of... What's that one called? Then? There's one called Headline Creator Pro. Headline Creator Pro. Yeah, no secret. It's actually, I, got, I think I got it on eBay. It's like $2.99. <laughs> fantastic. It's, it's great. Headline Creator Pro. And these are all headlines that have been written for in the last 50 years and they've got, they, they know the formula. They know the formula. Learn about copywriting. Try and discover 
who are the best copywriters are in, 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 the, in the world. And they'll give you stuff for free. And if you, if you look at them so many times, each person will give you a certain section of their knowledge, but the other person will give you their section, and it all overlaps, and you get this fantastic picture. And you become an expert at it. That's free. Love it. Now, I'd like to teach all that. Okay, so anyway. Next time, that's for another day. Okay, thank you for um, your attention. It's been great. I really enjoyed it. Thank you.